Hey, I'm Mike with Retro Boost. Thank you for everything. Uh, this is my 50th upload. Uh, for all those watching, I really appreciate you tuning in. This has been a big project of mine working on this show. Uh, it's been a ton of fun. I've enjoyed really being able to take my uh, passion for video games and my passion for film and, and bring them together and have my own YouTube channel. I can't believe that I'm already at 50, 50 uploads. Uh, I wanted to make sure that I was able to control which one ended up being the 50th, which is why I did this like kind of marathon thing with my uh, Just Playing series, because I wanted to be able to call it out to, uh, to once again say thank you for watching. Uh, here's to 50 more. <laughs> Let's get on with the show. Welcome back. Last time, we took a journey into the world of Action Replay. I showed off how it worked, did some cheats with Metroid Prime and Mario Kart Double Dash, definitely had some odd moments, that's for sure, but everything worked fine. It's uh, stable, as I would say. Uh, now we're going to continue the journey, we're going to go through many of my other GameCube games and uh, start to do some of the crazier stuff or just see what it's capable of, uh, that's for sure. Uh, and we'll see uh, how stable every game can be with certain cheats, because uh, like Mario Kart and Metroid Prime take it pretty well, but what'll happen with the others? Let's get into it. The first one we'll highlight is Animal Crossing. Animal Crossing is the kind of game that has a lot of cheats we can mess around with. You have the expected stuff, like infinite money or max money in inventory, etc. Make yourself a millionaire if you want. Uh, but there's also other things we can do, like have the museum be completed, uh, get all the golden items. Uh, so basically just have 100% completion in all the categories of the game, have whatever furniture you want from the catalog, etc, etc. Uh, some of the cooler things though, we can have all the mortgage payments on house upgrades only cost a single bell. That's pretty sweet. Uh, we can also have fast Nook upgrades, which means you go to Nook's shop, you buy one thing, and then the next day he upgrades the store, which would take a lot longer than that. Uh, but that's all simple stuff. I mean, what else we got here? We got jump and like changing size, jumping in Animal Crossing, huh? What's that look like? Looks like it's supposed to be there. What can I say? Uh, changing size. Things looking good here. How about we go back in the house? Whoa! Okay. Well, the game didn't like any of that. Apparently you're too big for your house and we've opened up the void realm. It's, it's raining here. <laughs> uh, all right, so that's what happens when you mess around a little too much. Uh, next game. And I'm over all thinking now. We got all of our money with Animal Crossing. Now we want to go fast. These two points aren't related at all. I know, I'm sorry. I just want to go fast now. Let's check out some racing games. We already got Mario Kart Double Dash out of the way, but what else do I got here? I got F-Zero GX. Let's check out this. Well, this one's pretty standard. Infinite health and whatnot, the usual assortment of cheats, but we've also got infinite energy. Infinite energy for F-Zero means infinite turbo boost speed. We can pretty much just maintain maximum speed. Now, this is pretty fun, but one issue I noticed right away is that it seems like all of the uh, other racers on the track also have infinite energy. So everyone's pretty much just boosting constantly. <laughs> everyone's going maximum, baby. Uh, and that doesn't give me much of an advantage if we're all the same. I just took uh, a game that involves skill and kind of removed the skill, but everyone's using boost. So no advantage here. Uh, that's unfortunate, but handy for the story mode, I guess, if you were struggling with it. But it uh, doesn't do much for us in the main campaign. Let's check out a different racing game. 
We've also got Kirby Air Ride. Uh, this one also offers us the potential for going fast. We can hold the uh, Z button to engage the it's called the Rowdy Charge Tank. Basically, all the air ride machines go like hyper out of control. And I've got it now on a uh, toggle. Yay! So we can definitely smash some lap records. Much like F Zero, this also causes the uh, AI opponents to also respond to it. So when I press the Z button to make them go, everyone's going insane speeds. It's super fun and definitely a good way to ambush a friend of yours if you were going to say, let's play Kirby Air Ride together. <laughs> you could definitely do some damage there. Uh, however, one really odd side effect. You can toggle the Rowdy Charge tank even during the replay of the race. Yeah, the replay is happening in-engine. This isn't like a, like a recorded cutscene. You can have it fire off. I thought that it was just a coincidence, but I, I keep pressing it and it's responding whenever I press it. So, it's not really a replay at all, is it, at this point? It's a whole different race with just computer opponents that I'm like the the puppet master of, free to just keep hitting the button and messing with it. Eh. But hey, F-Zero GX and Kirby Air Ride, they both work like normal. Uh, I can't say there's any issues with stability or crashes or anything, unlike Animal Crossing. Animal Crossing, the second that we tried to do anything uh, a little nuts, it just kind of like seized up and it died. So, this one, this, these, both of these racing games work fine. Definitely fun. Let's move on. We're gonna go right from racing to sports. Let's check out Mario Power Tennis. Now, all the cheats here are pretty much like, you just win. Press this button to win. One point wins, etc. But there is one that looks pretty funny. Opponent can't move. In a tennis game, not being able to move would be quite devastating. <laughs> Let's uh, see how this plays out, but just to steer the odds a little bit in the uh, opponent's favor, I'll choose one of the larger characters, Petey Piranha here. Uh, match begin! Yeah, as expected, I have a uh, clear advantage here. I mean, he's trying. He's like stuck to the floor and he's desperately going for it every time he can, but uh, I have the clear <laughs> advantage. Uh, so that's kind of handy, I guess. Uh, opponent, I would assume that that really refers to player two, so you could probably also prank a friend with this potentially. Uh, I'm not really sure. There's no friends around. Bob's been MIA for a long time. He went on like a vacation and just never came back, so. Who knows what's going on with that, but I don't have anyone to test this on. But that'd be my theory. So, Mario Power Tennis, pretty fun. Uh, how about Mario Superstar Baseball? Now, Mario Superstar Baseball has a lot of the same stuff that Power Tennis does, in the sense that you can just press buttons to mess with the score and uh, change statistics. But the interesting thing about this is that baseball, having strikes and outs and balls and whatnot, uh, there's a little more we can mess with in the game, more than just one hit wins. So, I gotta like write down the, the, the commands to this. It's kinda nuts. Hold this button, press the D-pad. We can basically mess with the game's counters for strikes, outs, and balls. So, let's see what we can do with this. So, all right. If I'm getting about to get my third strike, I can just reset the counter. And now I have no strikes, right? Here it comes. Whoa. Uh, you gonna come back? You gonna come back? We're just letting Luigi pitch practice, take practice swings? What is happening? What is happening? Okay, out. Um, wow. So it seems that the game is counting strikes in the background separate of what that counter actually says, because uh, it knew that that was the true third strike, regardless of what the statistics were talking about. Weird. So... <laughs> Can't really cheat that much, really. You could you could probably just... No, you can't. That, you're screwed there. You can control the number of outs, I guess. The game doesn't really know how to track that, but you can't you can't swing at the... swing the bat indefinitely. That doesn't work. Well, I tried to cheat. Uh, there's still commands, though, to make the score just, like, explode, so you could just win no matter what. So, I'm the winner here. Me. I have all the baseball skills. <laughs> Okay, next game. Now we're gonna go into the wonderful world of adventure games. The first of which will be Mario Sunshine. 
Now here, there's really only one cheat that's really interesting, and that's infinite water. Now, what does that mean? If you've played Mario Sunshine before, it's a game with Mario, it's a platformer, you have this water water tool. It works as a jetpack, it works as, an, uh, as a hose, uh, but with infinite water, it means that when I press the R button to spray, or to hover, either way, it never runs out, it won't stop, even if the game thinks it should. Uh, it just keeps on going, so we can fly with the jetpack indefinitely, we can spray indefinitely, pretty sweet. It's got me curious though, if the water jetpack hover feature works indefinitely, what happens if I use the rocket nozzle? Let's charge it up. Wow. I think we just sent Mario in space. I mean, we passed the sun, right? I think I saw that happen. I wonder how, I wonder if it can get down. I wonder if it's just like we're in like broken void zone or if he's, or if he's gonna come back. Uh, ground pound. And uh, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll check back on that, I guess. Uh, let's move on to another adventure game. Next up, we got Star Fox Adventures. This is a game that I do plan on definitely doing a uh, revisit episode for, but for now we can just mess around with it. Uh, there are a couple of pretty interesting ideas here. We got the moon jump. Now this is something that I could have done with Metroid Prime, but chose not to. Moon jump is you hold the you hold one button, in this case it's B, and you just kind of fly away. Uh, now in a game like Star Fox Adventures, which is a lot like Legend of Zelda, a game that doesn't have a button for jumping, this could really, uh, it could really break some stuff pretty seriously. We can do some pretty significant sequence breaking. Uh, however, unlike Metroid Prime or even Legend of Zelda, where sequence breaking is kind of normal and almost intentional in the sense that you can go wherever you want in the world, uh, that is not the case for Star Fox Adventures. This game does not like it if you attempt to sequence break. Uh, case in point, right from the get-go of the game, I can just head over here, we can jump across this gap, we are definitely not supposed to be here at this point in the game, and... oh dear. The game does not want to show me what's, what's loaded, but we can try to go out there, I guess. Ooh, frozen. Frozen. Uh, yeah, okay, so that didn't work out so well. Let's, uh, let's reset, try it again. Um, let's just be legit this time. Uh, I'll follow the, the game's intended course of action and, and we'll just use the moon jump wherever to, to make it easier. So now we get to this part, and you're supposed to get in this big bike race with these two guys, and you save this little guy, he's really annoying, you save him. Uh, but why, why even do the race? I can jump. We'll just jump over this barricade and we'll just walk the distance. Just 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 walk the, the track. How long? It's taken a while. Well well this is uh, uh, how's Mario Sunshine looking actually? Still going. Alright. Still walking here. Alright, there's the end. I can just jump down. I, I gotta be honest, I expected a cutscene to play here. It's supposed to play a cutscene here. Uh, it didn't though, because the game is like, uh, bike, bike, jet bike, not present, no cutscene for you. <laughs> so we jump down, keep going. I'm also supposed to have Tricky. He's like a companion in this game. Uh, don't have, don't have my partner, so... Try to move forward, I guess. Oh, it's the void space again! Frozen captured. <laughs> Uh, okay, try it all one more time. This time I, I'll do the race, did the race, get tricky, got tricky. Um, you're supposed to do a whole bunch of stuff with tricky. He teaches you how his commands work, but I don't wanna do that. Let's just jump across the pit. Didn't, don't need the pit. Jump over the tunnel. Don't have to have him dig the tunnel. Void space is back. All right, I'll go back, I guess. I'll go back, get the mushroom, kind of weird. It's procking for the tutorials again, but not really. Can't really feed them correctly. The whole game's just busted now. So, like I said before, you know, with Legend of Zelda or, or Metroid, you know, you could just, you could skip around and go places and the game functions. Star Fox, man, the second that you're out of line, it's just, it's just a broken mess. 
the game is no longer functional, even if you try to play it the right way. At this point, I've already gone, I, I, went, I did A and I did B, but I skipped C and D and I went back, I did B again and I came back to G and there's no I. It's just So, yeah, Star Fox Adventures, uh, as far as cheats go, if you do like infinite health and infinite like staff magic, you'll, be, you'll have fun, but uh, you try anything else. And man, are you in trouble. How is Mario doing? Still falling. Uh, okay. <laughs> Let's move on to our uh, grand finale here. Uh, the one that I was looking forward to most to messing around with, going nuts with the action replay codes on. Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time on GameCube. There are a lot of cheats for Ocarina of Time. We could start the game off with like every single item equipped. Uh, we could run fast. We got the moon jump from Star Fox, yay. Uh, and there's also bonus things like changing your tunic's color or being able to change your size. Ooh. Uh, <laughs> And there's also some other ones I haven't seen before. I want to try these first. Uh, Super Animated Link and Matrix Link. What? What the hell? Uh, all right, Super Animated. Let's let's go. Uh, oh, he's like fast. Oh gosh, look at him! Look, 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 look at those moves! Slashing and moving and slashing, and I'm running fast, but it's not hitting anything. I'm getting. I'm only. I'm only taking damage here. Uh, what is, and I'm dead. Um, uh, okay, uh, let's just skip those guys, I guess. We'll go right into the Deku tree. Uh, attacking the thing, attack the thing. I'm gonna try to attack him slower. It, yeah, okay. So, super animated Link. You're moving like a maniac, but I guess uh, it's just not doing any damage. So, let's forget that one. Uh, Slow-mo Link. Uh, ooh. <laughs> It makes all of his, like, miscellaneous animations play really, really slowly. We can walk around normally. Thank the heavens. Uh, but anything else, he just goes really slow. Let's go in this tunnel here and get the Kokiri sword. Oh, come on. You can do it. You can do it. And... And... Ooh. Ooh, and we're stuck. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> Slow-mo Link has has died inside of the log tunnel from being too slow. His heart just gave out. Low blood pressure. So, both of those suck. <laughs> let's uh, let's do it, let's just start it again and we'll do new game and we'll do jumping. We'll do super fast running. Uh, and we'll have chain size just for kicks and giggles, but let's let's do a new game with those things. Well, having the ability to jump in Zelda, as predicted, kind of destroys everything. But unlike Star Fox, the game continues to function. So I can just skip around in the Deku Tree dungeon, just go right from the start and climb up and fall, and I can just jump over this gap and get the fire stick and go down here, and in less than five minutes, I'm already at the boss fight. Um, the only thing I had to make sure to do is get the uh, slingshot. I decided not to... Uh spawn in with every item in the game. I wanted to see how fast I could complete a dungeon with the ability to jump. And the answer is quite fast. We do the boss fight, we finish it, cool. Uh, all right, time to cross Hyrule Field. Man, how many people were annoyed when you run across and it becomes nighttime and you're stuck? Well, problem solved, because we can just go fast, baby. <laughs> <laughs> the really weird thing is that you have to assign the the run fast button and the jump button both are are already used by the game to use items with the C stick essentially. It's like the quick assign. So whenever I start to run, uh, it's a Deku nut that just and <laughs> he'll disappear like a ninja. <laughs> Not not all items will work that. That's the best one that I got. If you run out of them, I guess it'd be great because it's an empty item slot. You just go. Uh, but here we go. We get to we get to the Hyrule Town. Uh, record time. Still morning because Link has powers of the Speed Force, and now we're here. Uh, how does sneaking into the castle work? Can I just like run right over all of them? We're in. 
<laughs> uh, now the now the harder part, I, I assume, we have to go through the courtyard, but again, we can just, we just go like, we just zip, we just zip through. Uh, ooh, gotta be careful though, but uh, here we go. Yep, all right, just over all of it. I think I may have gone too far. Um, oh dear. Uh, let's try that all again. Victory achieved. And now we find ourselves in the courtyard uh, center where Zelda is. You know, one thing about this game, just like a minor critique, you can't like skip through dialogue, which is like a thing that like every game on earth lets you do pretty much. Uh, so playing it for the first time, it's cool because it's a very story driven, I guess. Like, it's got a lot of narrative to it, it's cool. Uh, but like, man, with, with the ability to like run like the Flash and jump over buildings, it's like a real like grind to sit here and be like, yep, uh-huh, uh -huh. Yep, uh -huh. the three spirits. Yep, uh -huh. the three spirits. I know. I got get it off for you. Yep. We're just kind of waiting for Zelda to finish talking. Just uh, what? I'm I'm paying attention. You can see I'm maintaining eye contact. Clearly, I'm interested. I'm vested in your plight. God, some people these days. Um, wow, Ocarina of Time. Uh, super fun with action replay. There's so much you can do with it. Little things like being able to change your tunic's color is fun in itself, but like being able to run and jump, or even even just forgetting all that, and just like doing the game New Game Plus style, and starting with every item in the game in your inventory, I mean, that's pretty cool stuff. <laughs> oh, super fun. Um, what was I, was I forgetting something? Oh yeah, Mario Sunshine. Let's see what's going on with Mario. <gasps> oh my gosh, it's, it's the island. It's real! Oh, Mario's back from space! Now he's a dangerous stellar object on a collision course! Yay! I super did not think that this was gonna be a possibility. I've done this before. I've sent Mario into orbit with this cheat, and I just assumed that the game was a loss and I reset. This time I was curious. I wanted to see if you could actually come back down. Uh, and here it comes. Here comes the island. I think it's pretty cool that you can also see like other locations in the game. Like you can see that the uh, Gelato Beach is over there, another level in the game. It's kind of cool that all of it's visible uh, from every point in the on the map. But uh, here we come and coming in for a landing. Uh, okay, uh, we're back. Uh, only logical thing to do is to, is to do it again. But this time I'm not gonna let go of it. So I'm gonna charge it up, send him off. Wow, there he goes. Still going, still going, still going. The camera like cannot keep up. The sun, we passed the sun, that was pretty intense. Uh, so we've, we've gone to the other side of the solar system at this point. Um, uh, <laughs> and the journey starts all over again. When I did it the first time, I let go after like, I don't know, less, less than three seconds. Uh, I held it for, for way longer this time. He's probably never gonna come back. Uh, there we go. Bye bye Mario, thanks for your sacrifice. <laughs> uh, cool, there we have it then. Well, that was certainly a journey. All the, uh, all the games, they respond differently to action replay. Some run better than others, some it's just you just can't even try. Like Star Fox Adventures was a broken mess of mayhem from the get-go, but Legend of Zelda with the same kind of cheats functions perfectly fine. So some games are more restrictive than others, they respond better. Pretty cool thing. Action Replay is a cool little device uh, that's, that's, it just became like uh, outdated with the concept of modding. So that's, that's what you have now. You don't have to buy a product to do it anymore, you just, Download a mod and do the same thing to your game and you have the same level of effectiveness Some games will respond better to it some mods are more risky and they could risk crashing or worse If it's a networked game you could risk being banned, you know, these are simpler times But action replay is a cool product. There's stuff that predates it like game genie and game shark uh, But nothing really came after this generation action replay just kind of fell off the map uh, they did do some additional products for the Nintendo DS and 3DS. They're called Power Saves. Um, but they didn't do anything for Xbox 360 or PS3 uh, or even the Wii, really. The, the, that model action you play is for GameCube, but it, it works in a Wii system. Uh, so once we got to Generation uh, 7, I guess, it's when everything kind of just fell away and became a thing of the past. Uh, but 
Super fun to revisit, obviously. Had a lot of fun there. Uh, thanks again for watching. This was the 50th upload uh, special. I'm always going to call out the milestones. This is the ninth uh, revisit episode, uh, but 50th upload for the channel as a whole. I got more going on these days. We got the revisit episodes like this. I've got Let's Play content with the Just Playing series. It's just me playing games. Uh, and there's more coming down the line. So make sure to subscribe to get notifications. And thank you so much for watching. Here's to 50 more.